Good day and welcome and Happy New Year to all. Today we are presenting Water Instrumentation Webinar. My name is Mary Lou Raboulis, Client Relations at CIM. On behalf of the Environmental and Social Responsibility Society, ESRS, we thank you for joining us today. Some housekeeping before we get started. There'll be a Q&A at the end of the presentations. Please type them into the question box in the control panel. If you cannot locate the question box, please type your question in the chat box or raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon located on the control panel. We will unmute your mic and you'll be able to ask your question. And now without further ado, we are pleased to present the moderator for today's presentations, Bernard Obey. Bernard is a water treatment expert and owner at EnviroBay Inc. Welcome, Bernard. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much, Mary Lou. Um, so I am also the water group lead at the CIM ESRS. ESRS is the Environmental and Social Responsibility Society of CIM. And if you're interested in this webinar and you're interested in participating, we could always use more people to help out with the water group. And in the handouts, there's two handouts that you can see. One is about the next webinar and the other one will have the uh, information and contact information of every one of the panelists. Uh, I myself work in uh, mine water management and treatment and have been doing so for the last 30 years. Can we go to the next? So we're going to start this, uh, uh, this presentation, this panel, with a safety share. Uh, and I think one safety share that's uh, that's very pertinent nowadays because there's a lot of working from home going on. Often when we're uh, working in a in an office, we have a good setup uh, with a drawer for your uh, typing and also uh, with the screen properly organized. But when you're working from home, you shouldn't do like my 16 year old daughter who's homeschooling from her bed. You should try to set up and be uh, as ergonomic as possible because you can actually get some long-term problems from not being properly set up. Uh, next slide, please. So today, our agenda, we're gonna have three panelists that are gonna show us some new and exciting water instrumentation. Uh, first will be Greg Slater of Quitos, and then Anthea Sargent from 2S Water, and Jeff Sip Simpson of Aquatic Life Limited. Afterwards, uh, we will go through the questions, and we're doing the questions at the end, so that this way you can have a question that is pertinent to all the presenters or to a specific presenter. And you can type in your questions as we go. I, I will put them aside and bring them back out at the end. Each presentation is 15 minutes. Uh, if there is a lot of interest and too many questions, we can go on uh, up until 1.30. Uh, obviously, there's one hour that it's scheduled and we understand we all have busy lives and you can leave after the official hour or you can stay for discussions and, and questions. So our first presenter today, uh, Greg Slater is Senior Vice President of Global Sales at Quitos. And he is uh, and has also worked on project management and solutions uh, engineering teams and has more than 25 years experience in the oil and gas supply chain, asset management, AI and technology industries, helping customers solve complex challenges facing their. Let me see. What was the rest of that? <laughs> Basically, realizing <laughs> exponential value and return on investment. All right, Perfect. go ahead, Greg, it's all yours. Well, thank you very much, Bernard, and uh, and certainly appreciate the introduction. And thank you very much, everybody, for uh, joining us today. Uh, excited to present uh, what uh, exciting things uh, Kitos is doing in the industry, um, helping companies transform uh, how they approach uh, critical uh, water uh, quality testing and monitoring. Uh, and really sort of embracing uh, digital transformation uh, within the organization. Um, so if we take a look at some of the challenges um, that companies, and let's talk specifically about mining companies face today, um, you know, legacy water quality testing, customers typically experience a lack of consistent visibility 
uh, into their water quality blind spots. Um, it typically involves a lot of manual sampling, uh, testing, uh, and manual data entry uh, that customers can then utilize uh, to improve their, their operations. Um, we typically find that customers experience um, extended turnarounds. Uh, we work uh, with mining companies in Latin America, US, Canada, um, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. And what we see as sort of an average is anywhere from you know, 15 to 20 day turnaround. Um, and that is way too long um, if you want to avoid any anomalies uh, or any issues uh, associated with your, your water quality. Um, what we find is a lot of companies um, are really sort of on the back foot, um, very much reactive versus proactive uh, in how they are currently able uh, to monitor and manage uh, their water quality programs. Um, and the legacy systems are traditionally um, very sort of high maintenance, um, requires customers to do a lot of cleaning, uh, calibration, uh, replacement of reagents um, in any sort of analyzers that they, that they typically use. Um, so in order to really sort of transform uh, the industry um, is we've developed a fully integrated hardware, software, and data analytics solution. Uh, that gives uh, field operators 24 by seven eyes in the field. Um, they also have access to uh, real-time, fully automated water quality data. Um, we are currently uh, delivering 32 water quality parameters uh, with lab precision accuracy. So think of um, our platform as really sort of a lab in the box. Um, and we have as many as 30, uh, 13 uh, heavy metals as part of that 32 water quality uh, parameters that we currently uh, provide. Um, what we've done as well is we actually provide uh, our fully integrated hardware software data analytics solution under a unique zero capex hardware software uh, as a service model. So, you know, as I mentioned, we work um, with a lot of mining companies, um, you know, some extremely large uh, in the industry uh, and a uh, common fold across all of these operations, all of these mining companies is they typically have remote operations uh, with multiple sample uh, locations. Uh, you can see an example over here where um, one mine in particular has over a hundred uh, different sampling uh, locations across their operation. Um, they do require hourly uh, or daily testing um, to ensure safe and sustainable operations. Um, you know, they are challenged with sort of traditional high cost of water quality uh, management and ownership. Um, and they struggle with really sort of visibility into their water quality data um, and no real time data that they can use effectively within their operation. Um, I'd mentioned this in the previous slide that they very much are sort of reactive in terms of proactive as far as any sort of anomaly detection and treatment. Um, and they typically face um, sort of issues or problems associated with any issue uh, resolution. So as I mentioned, we have uh, developed uh, as, as early as 2015, a fully integrated hardware software solution. Uh, on the left hand side, you see the Keto Shield. This is roughly the size um, of a large microwave oven. Um, this unit has the capability to test and monitor uh, 32 water quality parameters, including those 13 uh, heavy metals that I mentioned. Um, of course, in addition to that, we are able to test and monitor the environmentals, um, a list of nutrients, organics, and inorganics. Um, a great feature within the unit uh, is not only have we incorporated a lot of IP associated with the operation of the unit, but we've incorporated a lot of um, robotics automation. And what this basically means is it's an install and forget for our customers. Uh, simply install the unit um, and then sit back and enjoy the data uh, that either a single or multiple shields actually generate. Um, you don't have to, customers don't have to worry about the cleaning uh, or the calibration. Uh, so the system or the unit actually cleans and calibrates itself. Uh, so that is completely eliminated um, from the customer. Um, and there's no need for any sort of calibration uh, or a reagent uh, topping up. Um, that is all included, uh, including the service and the maintenance uh, through the subscription fee, the zero capex model that we provide uh, to our customers. Um, customers then have the option on how we ingest data 
um, from a single device or multiple devices um, by Ethernet or cell, so local cell network. Um, and you can imagine we have deployed these units um, in some pretty remote areas around the world, even in the US, uh, Latin America, Peru, Brazil, um, Australia, New Zealand, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, we then aggregate all of the data into the Kinos platform, so unlimited number of users uh, that have access to the platform, either through your uh, PC or your smartphone. This is where users interact with the data, view all of the data being generated by a single or multiple shields. Um, we have uh, reporting capabilities. Um, customers can run correlations, trending of their data sets. We also have an a a REST API available where we can either ingest data into the platform, either from lab data or alternative sources, um, or our customers can pull or we can push data uh, into third-party platforms. Um, so typically, we are integrating with SCADA systems, uh, we're integrating with BI tools, um, as well as control systems. So we see a shift in the industrial space uh, where customers are using the data being generated by the Shield, um, feeding that data into the control system, which then automates uh, the chemical dispensing. Of course, this has an added value with accurate data, you're more accurately able to treat your water, which means that you can potentially reduce uh, your chemical costs as well. Uh, we provide, as I mentioned, uh, the solution um, through a, a hardware software as a service model. So it's really a simple installation, configuration and operation uh, for our customers. Uh, so for a flat monthly fee, uh, our customers have access to a single or multiple units. Uh, we configure the unit based on the parameters that our customers want to test and monitor, uh, the frequency of monitoring, so our customers can have unlimited monitoring uh, within, their, uh, within their shield units. Uh, we come out, so either uh, our own technicians or through our partner network, come out and do the installation. Uh, and then our customers have access um, to the water quality data, um, the actionable insights, uh, very important, especially with digital transformation these days, is giving those insights to customers where they can take action um, and address any anomalies, um, or as I mentioned, actually uh, more accurately treat uh, their water. Uh, and then within the subscription model, uh, we come out typically once a quarter uh, and do that service and that maintenance as part of the subscription. So again, uh, reiterating, it's a hands-free operation uh, for our customers. Um, so this, uh, the, the benefits that our customers uh, actually generate uh, from the solution uh, is they now have access to real-time water quality data, 24 by 7, 365 days a year. Uh, they now have uh, threshold-based alerts, so they can set up thresholds within uh, the platform. If ever a single multiple parameters exceed uh, a certain threshold, the system will send out an alert or a notification in the form of an email or an SMS. Um, they now have the ability to reduce their costs associated with labor, uh, time to travel around all the sample locations, of course travel, and reduce their chemical costs associated with the treatment. Um, they can also set up remote uh, monitoring capabilities. Um, so a mining company in Canada uh, can now monitor uh, the entire water quality program across all of their mines across the globe. Um, we, uh, they can now ensure uh, that water quality anomalies are being addressed immediately. Uh, and that's a big challenge for our customers is, you know, once receiving those results, even though they may take 15 or 20 days, is are they actually being addressed effectively? Um, that'll help uh, our customers, of course, ensure safe and sustainable operations. Uh, and then a great added value uh, of the system is that we can ensure, or help ensure ESG goals uh, are being achieved. And then just a little bit of background uh, on Kidos. Uh, we were founded in 2015. Uh, we're a Series B company. We have roughly um, 80 employees. We really do have a global focus um, in terms of the customers that we service. Uh, so not only do we work with a lot of mining companies, but we work with a lot of industrial companies, oil and gas, pulp and paper, we work with a lot of municipalities around the world, as well as a lot of uh, food and air companies around uh, the world as well. Um, the background of the company, um, a lot of engineering expertise, robotics expertise, data science, material science expertise, uh, really have a fantastic team uh, that helps sales uh, in actually uh, offering these solutions to our customers. Um, we have the Kidos data platform, uh, 
um, the Keto Shield, as I just described previously, and then we do have a consumption management product uh, that we offer a, a variety of companies as well. And we have deployments really across the world, um, right? So notably in the US, Canada, Mexico, Latin America, um, and India. Um, and we were founded uh, in 2015 by our CEO and founder, Mina Sankaran. Um, and, uh, and that's it. So thank you very much. Um, if any of you have any questions, would like to uh, contact me after this presentation or in the next couple of days, uh, you can reach me uh, at great.slater at ketos.co or my cell 303-919-7906. So thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. That was fantastic. Very interesting. Look forward to seeing how that works out in the future. Um, now, if we can go to the next slide, our next speaker is going to be Anthea Sargent. She is an entrepreneur, CEO, and tech innovator. Anthea has of 2S Water, where they have developed the world's first sensor for detecting metals in water in real time. She has a master's in business accounting, a three times entrepreneur, and a mother of two. Sometimes she, somehow she finds time for all of that. Uh, she has received a Clean 50 2021 and research and for her research and development work. Uh, she was voted Startup Alberta's most promising startup entrepreneur in 2019 and has received numerous other awards for innovation in water instrumentation. Go ahead, Anthea, it's all yours. Great, thanks for having me here today. I'm just going to get my screen share up here. And uh, I believe you are seeing my presentation now. Yeah, um, we see so it. Lovely. Uh, and, and thanks to Greg. That was a great presentation. Uh, nothing difficult to follow, right? Uh, just, just a wonderful presentation by Greg there. Uh, we are 2S Water. And um, we I, I actually love to follow Kijos because we're addressing a very similar problem. And I feel like we're a very complementary technology to what Greg is doing. Um, my apologies, I'm on the right slide. So we are attempting to address a, the exact same problem is that data is stale. In order to understand the qualities of your water right now, majoritively you're sending a sample to a laboratory. That is especially true of the detection of metals in water. Right now that is run almost entirely through laboratory processes. Um, and as Greg said, the delay on that data is significant. Um, it can be 72 hours to 10 days in North America for an external lab. Um, don't be in South America. It could take you months. We've heard two months to get lab results in some instances. Um, of course, there's an alternative. You can set up your own in-house laboratory. Uh, it'll cost you a couple million dollars to set up and then, you know, half a million a year to run. And with all that expense, you're now getting your data every four to eight hours. Still not fast enough, not fast enough for process optimization, for machinery maintenance, or for environmental compliance. Uh, to add insult to injury, when that data arrives from the lab, it arrives in an email. It's not integrated. Uh, it, it needs to be uh, separately analyzed by the operator before operational decisions can be taken. Um, what does this all lead to? Well, it leads to fines and environmental infractions. It leads to high process costs because process aren't optimized by the actual existing conditions. Uh, lost revenue, any metal that is escaping your mine and getting into the water could have been revenue and is now turned from an asset into a liability. Uh, and of course, high water costs uh, throughout the process. Um, 2S Water have developed the AquaValid sensor in order to solve this problem. Uh, unlike the Keto system, we are focused directly on metals. We only do metal analysis, so we're a great complementary system to what, to what Greg is offering. Uh, we can now, we have validated our sensor on 31 different metals, including heavy. We generate a data point uh, anywhere between every minute to every five minutes, and we are connected directly to the pipe in order to perform analysis. Um, sorry, my slides are loading just a little slower than I click them. There we go. We can see the sensor in, in situ there. Uh, it we're just a, a, a small box which connects directly to the pipe. And the system has a fully automated uh, sample handling, sample preparation, and data generation. Uh, so it really is a plug and play system. We are very, very close to ICP technology. We are a plasma-based spectroscopic analysis method, uh, which means that the results that we are generating are directly analogous to laboratory results. Uh, you can compare the two apples to apples. 
Uh, the difference is that we don't need a skilled operator and we can be directly online. So you're not waiting for those results and you're not paying the cost of having that skilled operator. Hand in hand with that, we do uh, we provide the data in, in a format that your operator needs in order to make those operational decisions. Uh, we can fully integrate with SCADA. We are getting those parts per billion resolutions, so the data that you need to actually make those operational decisions. And it's a fully automated system, so you plug it in and it handles every part of the process. Uh, we can also be fully remote IoT integrated, so you don't have to be at the same site. Um, you can put it anywhere within your system and still receive that data when and where you need it. Um, we have validated 31 different analytes. There are another 47 analytes. I see my screen is not updating to keep up with me. I gotta hit this button just a little faster. Uh, we have validated 31 different analytes in the laboratory. We have another 47 in process that we are developing right now. Uh, the important to note analytes on there is we've gone through uh, our, our effluent metals. You know, we have our copper, zinc, cadmium, um, lead, and iron. We have our process optimization metals. So your gold, your lithium, your nickel, um, your silver. And we have also done those of concern for human consumption and, and uh, like thallium, uh, lead, iron. Uh, those ones that you want to make sure are not occurring in your water source. All of those are in our available suite. Um, so I want to show you just a little bit of kind of the data that we generate. Uh, right here we have a picture of some of the raw data that our system generates. We then convert that into a parts per million or parts per billion number to give to your operator. Um, so it's a, an easy to understand metric that they can adapt into their existing systems. Uh, here's an analysis we did of the Edmonton City tap water. Um, we also have some data here on uh, where we did a uh, validation on an existing water treatment technology. They were looking to demonstrate that they were cleaner than city water, and we were able to demonstrate that for them. As you can see, the red line has uh, significantly lower levels of calcium, um, although most of the other metals did stay relatively the same. Um, and we've also done a lot of work on process optimization. I think that's somewhere that uh, there's some really interesting applications. And lithium is one of our, our strong core competencies. Um, these results are, we were given client samples from South American lithium brines. We were actually able to beat the lab. It turns out that ICP has some limitations around lithium detection that our existing technology doesn't. And two of the four samples, we beat the lab results by 67%. Uh, so they were significantly off from what those results were. Uh, Lithium represents one of our in-process extraction opportunities for, for process optimization. Um, I'll talk about that more in a second. So we are a little earlier stage than ketos. We're, we're following along behind in their steps. We have one deploy in the field right now. We're in early stage technology. We are doing effluent monitoring at a mine site in the United States. Uh, and we are in contract negotiations for several more deployments with them. We are also doing some interesting work around lithium brine, as I just mentioned, and other in-process optimization. So our second project around in-process optimization is going to be on the gold cyanide leaching process, where we are actually analyzing the amount of gold left in process after that, so that we can optimize that extraction process and make sure that all the, the valuable gold is being extracted before that um, solution goes on. Um, so ideal applications for our technology right now, uh, we actually detect total dissolved solids. That's We don't do total metals, we do total dissolved solids. We are looking for applications of low total suspended solids and low hydrocarbons. However, we can take all the dissolved solids you can throw our way. Uh, we've had lots of fun testing on uh, South American lithium brines where the dissolved solids can be in the high hundred thousands uh, per, per sample and done really well. So. Uh, we generally have three applications where we see this technology bringing a lot of benefit to your operation, and those are process optimization, machinery maintenance, and effluent monitoring. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about process optimization. Um, we can both optimize in process anytime the system goes aqueous, so that's when we're talking about our lithium brine extraction, as well as the gold cyanide process. Uh, some of the other processes that we've looked at are mixed stream processes, where you have two metals of high value in that stream. By providing you the breakdown of how much of each metal is in there, we can help you make sure that you're extracting all of those metals from the process. Um, hand in hand with that, we can do water treatment system optimization. So by knowing the input 
an output of metals through your system, we can make sure that you're not overusing chemicals to dose. We know that in mining, the conditions change very, very quickly. And so it's important to be able to adjust to those peaks without having to overdose the water in the meantime. Uh, we also look at uh, machinery maintenance op optimization. So in, in boiler maintenance, closed loop systems and corrosion detection, making sure that these processes are getting proper feed water so you're not facing abnormal amounts of scaling or a corrosion that you're not seeing at the uh, with the visual eye we can detect in the water so some other great applications of this technology uh, of course probably our core competency and and uh, the most applications that we've done are in effluent monitoring um, we help make sure that you are uh, obeying your site licenses and that your compliance is to date um, that allows you to make sure that you don't incur fines or site infractions or, or have the, the government officials staring down your neck because of a, a slight uh, exceedance in parameters. We detect those exceedances before they go to the output so that you can divert that back into additional treatment and, uh, and make sure that the water is clean and pure leaving your facility. Or maybe it goes back into your facility. We also can help increase the amount of recirculated water um, by proving that it is clean and pure enough before it goes to the output as well as reducing tailings as part of our, our, or our environmental mission uh, to make sure that only the waters that have to go to tailings go to tailings and everything else can be recirculated into your system or released into the environment, knowing that it is safe, pure, and, and ready for uh, human or environmental consumption. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are a early stage technology. Uh, we, have, uh, we did our first deploys in 2020 to municipal sites as proof of concept and proof of validation. Uh, in April of 2021, we were very honored to receive the, uh, the Clean Technology uh, Mining Challenge first place prize uh, for having a technology that had a great environmental impact on the mining industry and dealt with a pertinent problem that the mining industry has. Uh, we are very focused on the mining industry right now. Uh, we, they share, you share our environmental mission uh, as well as having a, a wonderful application where we can uh, explore this technology. Uh, we did deploy our first product in uh, late 2021 to a Colorado uh, legacy nickel mine where we are monitoring the uh, five metals coming out of the effluent uh, to optimize their water treatment process is the uh, goal of that deployment. And we are expecting data coming from that site uh, that we can release to the public very soon. So I encourage you to click on the uh, handouts uh, download our contact information and send me an email. I'll be happy to share those results with you as they come forward. Um, right now, we are we have our next few uh, effluent monitoring cases uh, booked and ready to go. We'd love to be testing our technology at your facility as well if you're interested in this. In addition, we're looking for partners on the process optimization side. So if you do have a process which goes fully aqueous and are interested in knowing what the, the metal constituents of that process are for process optimization, that's something we would really like to explore with you. Um, so, so please reach out. Uh, I'm Anthea Sargent, as uh, Bernard mentioned. My email is asargent at 2swater.com. And um, we would very much like to connect with you. So, as, and please download the contact info. That's how you get a hold of all of us presenters today. Thank you very much, Anthea. That was fantastic. I, I, I'm, I think I'm I wrapped up early. I'm always so enthusiastic. I plow through my information quickly. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We're right on time. Uh, and awesome. you should see the questions coming in. I won't be able to get everybody's questions. There's a lot coming in. Keep it going. Uh, while Jeff is presenting, I'll try and do the triage and have the the best ones for when we uh, when this is all done. Um, and so, I think I, I speak for all of us when I say, you know, if you have a specific question that one of us presenters can't get to, please email it to us. We're all really happy to answer your questions uh, outside if we don't get to them in the presentation. Um, so thank you for the opportunity, Bernard. Perfect. Yeah, in the handouts you'll have everybody's email. So our next speaker is uh, Jeff Simpson, who is president, founder, and CEO of Aquatic Life Limited. Uh, he has over 36 years experience, and Jeff continues to advise mining companies and stakeholders on their environmental monitoring requirements. His passion for water and water monitoring solutions has led to solutions for some of the most complex water and wastewater issues. Thank you, Jeff. It's all yours. Thank you, Bernie. Thank, 
it's it's a wonderful opportunity to get started and i, I, I i'm uh, looking forward uh, i'm thankfully getting the support of elaine to uh, help me with my slides and i'd like to uh, thank her for that I had a little bit of bandwidth issues this morning, so I've just wanted to, uh, I will be asking her to move slides along. So today, I'm going to talk about our water monitoring and water management system for smart mining. Uh, it's a division of our of our company known as Aquatess, and uh, you can have my contact details below. And I guess the next slide, Elaine, please. So aquatic life, for those who don't know us, we've been around for 36 years. Uh, we have our head office in Pinawa, Manitoba. Uh, Pinawa is uh, famous as a nuclear research community and we have, we have some very bright people working here that uh, want to support your operations. So we, over time, we've, over the 36 years that I've been in business, we've developed solutions for municipal mining, oil and gas, pulp and paper, different types of solutions for different industries and, and uh, governments. The, in that time though, we've dealt, when we started dealing with some of the mines, uh, it, specifically around 2012, we started to notice an issue with remote water monitoring where it was challenging for the, uh, for the, the mine. So uh, we developed AquaTest, with, which is, it, so, helping you with uh, water quality and quantity monitoring in these remote locations. And we're helping you with a site-wide water balance, with your uh, meeting your environmental uh, uh, permit obligations and some of the process optimization. Next slide, please. So just a few per things to, to think about. We're gonna focus in on quantity and when we're referencing quantity, obviously it's the water coming in and the water going out of your mine throughout the footprint of the mine and also beyond the mine as it, as it, ex it goes into the watershed. So we, most mines either have too much water or they are not enough. And so we, we, we've done, uh, some exploration work uh, to see what, what mines we can work with in Chile, in the desert conditions. We've worked in, in, in uh, uh, torrential downpours, never seen so much water, and look forward to uh, working on different conditions. Next slide, please. Quality, we, we focus in on quality as well, and and which is the water coming in, the water going out again, meeting your discharge limits, looking at, at, the, at the values of the various parameters so that you can better manage your, your process uh, and recovery of metals. And we want to be that intelligent solution for you to help you with your mine water management. And given that climate change uh, is, it, is upon us, we know some of these things are going to be changing. They have impacts on your uh, on your tailings dams. They have impacts on your seepage ponds. All of these things we want to help you with. Next slide, please. So when I define the problem, this is one of our very early installations in a mine in uh, BC, where they were worried about uh, they had a closed uh, tailings uh, facility. And they were having monitoring seepage, so we designed a conceptual design for a weir and uh, and monitoring system for this. Here we're monitoring uh, the that we were looking at uh, the the flow and the and the TSS conductivity of the water, and then we were able to work on looking at loading values. So this is a remote location. Obviously, it's it's not not always easy to get to these sites, and that's again the problem as we see it. Next slide, please. So traditional water monitoring, which we, others have spoken about, is uh, grab sample water monitoring, and we've typically find that, uh, and I'm sure mines, uh, other mine and engineers have seen this helicopter ride to a northern location 
uh, it could cost you $20,000 in helicopter fees to get to that site. Uh, you've got to maybe send more than one person to the field, to the location. In my experience uh, working in remote sites, which I've done most of my life, we've seen the variety of issues from bee stings in the field to wildlife issues and, and inaccessible locations in the, in, the, in the winter time that are making it impossible to get to the site. So these are issues that we want to address. Next slide, please. So many of you have used different monitoring solutions on your sites. And what I have found over time is that people are, they, they find it challenging to install in the field. And I've had engineers say to me, I don't want to have to learn ladder logic to be able to set up my, my system. So I, I want to focus in on this. We want to make a system now that is easier for the end user. We're built for the most of the systems that you see on the slide are not built for cold climates. We, in, especially in Canada, can get minus 50, we can get very cold, and systems need to be able to operate in different temperatures. Sensors tend to, uh, can be uh, not compatible with the telemetry systems on the market. And, we're, and uh, so you can find proprietary systems where they're not uh, allowing for other sensors to be connected and that, that becomes uh, an issue. So we want to address those issues. Next slide, please. So the Aqua Hive. Aqua Hive is, is a development, it's a 100% Canadian made development. Uh, we, we designed this uh, over, over the last number of years and this uh, to be an end to end water monitoring solution for you. We want to make it simple so that you can go out, deploy your sensor with ease. You don't have to send out the, uh, the uh, uh, and spend hours in on site set, uh, setting up the sensor and connecting it. So we're trying to make it simple. I want you to be able to get data onto your dashboard or on, onto your desktop. So that's the key. We want to make it simple for you. So in this photo is northern Saskatchewan. You have a number of uh, monitoring wells bringing in uh, uh, CTD data into one set, uh, system, and then we're sending it to the cloud and we'll we'll come back to this. Next slide please. So the Aqua Hive terminal that I mentioned earlier is, is built in Canada. It's it can be powered by wind or solar. We don't use disposable batteries. We found over time that, uh, that this can be an issue. And we so you can recharge these with the solar and wind. We have plug and play connectivity that, and that all weather design. So here you have that same sort of location in Northern Saskatchewan in the winter. Uh, and you can see that uh, this, this system is running in very low sunlight and, and working very well. We use satellite and cellular telemetry and we have a rollover capability depending on your availability of, uh, so, for instance, in southern Canada, you might have cellular, but on a weekend uh, when the, the when it gets a busy network, you might have a rollover to satellite because of that. We have a low cost of ownership, and we want to focus on making it easy for the mine to adopt this. So we have a lease options, and we have purchase options, and you, you, different options for you, so it can come out of OPEX or CAPEX. Uh, next slide, please. Our dashboard, which you can is customizable, and you'd see this at, at, on your at your desk, and you can configure alerts. So if you have a particular uh, water level that is a, a, a an alert level, you can configure that. 
you can you can have custom calculations. So I mentioned earlier that we were doing flow monitoring on a, on a site and you could do loading values and flow and put in the weir formulas into the system so it calculates that flow value for you automatically. We want to get this data into your uh, system so we've built an API that so you can and you can easily also just download from the dashboard the data and and it's it's your data. We stress that it's the mine's data, not our data. So if you wish it to be deleted from a server, it can be on request. Next slide, please. Here's a, one of the key things that I wanted to ensure when we set this up. You know, I've got a bit of gray hair, so I've been doing this for a little while. We have uh, a variety of sensors that we wanted to bring into the system. We felt they were important to the mining industry. So you have an, an SCAN spectrometer as an example, which can measure hydrogen sulfide, hydrocarbons, chlorophyll, a uh, variety of different parameters in real time, and it can be deployed in the field in your ponds in, in different locations easily. Self, it has self-cleaning oper operation. We have other multi-parameter sons from Institute, from Aquareed, Vega sensors. The amylizer may be important to you. Amylizer measures ammonia and ammonium, and you could use that in, in, in meeting your obligations uh, to the government of Canada. Uh, we have uh, we we are not restricted to these sensors. We're sensor agnostic, so we develop sensor libraries, and that's key to our operation. The libraries allow us to expand out. Next slide, please. So, who is the Aqua Hive for? I think it's probably relatively clear. People who want to know real-time water quality and quantity. You want to have an operational water balance, which you know all, all in real time. So you have a number of stations bringing in weather data, water quality and quantity data, and you can build that water balance model associated. We have, want to help you with, uh, with uh, sort of site-wide reductions in risk, and we want to enhance your, your water treatment processes your process optimization. Next slide, please. So most of you know water balance. Uh, we like to s tell you that, and we can demonstrate this, that we can work, and most of these arrows on this on this image. So it's if, it, if you're wanting to know the weather data, we can capture the weather data. We want to know the water level in your pit. You can know that. Want to know the dewatering. Uh, discharge uh, water and some of those issues. I go to the tailings pond because that seems to be a common place that we we are deployed, where we want to measure the, the the water level. And you're concerned that maybe in the winter you're concerned about uh, having a rainfall event and something happening to the water level in your pond. So next slide, please. So last, this is my second last slide, and it's a slide that should, sort of shows you that we are deployed in various parts of the world. So you, uh, we discussed briefly the groundwater baseline study being done in northern Saskatchewan, where we're bringing in clusters of, of monitoring wells into aqua hives and sending that data back to the, the, to the client and, and to their uh, engineering firm that's assisting them. The, 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 this is key to them because they need this information to decide on it on moving forward as part of their EA. We have uh, the slide here from the Dominican Republic. You can see the pond and we have a, a deployment there where we're monitoring water quality. The water, they needed this information because they're doing process that recover, reuse of this water as makeup water in the in the plant, and they need to know that the ORP, the P, the pH, the conductivity, and these types of parameters. We found in time the ORP has a daily cycle to it, and we're able to monitor that. So 
that that becomes important to the plant operations and they can see that in real time. We have the, 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 mine, the, the seepage monitoring application that I mentioned earlier down below where we're monitoring the ins and outs of water coming into a site to develop a site water balance. And lastly, I'm gonna speak about a, a very important part of aquatic life's uh, development right now. We have been building a relationship uh, with the International Institute of Sustainable Development that has the experimental lakes area in Ontario. And we have, uh, we're, we're developing a uh, watershed uh, monitoring uh, opportunity for the Winnipeg River watershed. And we're trying to develop early warning to treatment plants, to other organizations along the waterway. And part of those warnings will be algal bloom detection, uh, fog, that the trying to do we're developing a phosphorus algorithm for the for the river and so th this is using uh, uh, the uv spectrometer the uv vis spectrometer from scan and it's connected to the the aqua hive and that's part of the process next slide please So that is my presentation. I bet I rushed it because I tend to do that when I, when, but uh, I welcome any questions and you can see my email address and our two different websites associated to this. And for those who want to visit Pinawa, this is a view outside of my office and we welcome you to come to visit. It's a beautiful place and uh, it's a, and, this is the waterway that we're monitoring with the IISD right now and the whole, whole watershed. Thank you again. That was truly excellent, Jeff. It really is exciting to see everything. Uh, I'd like to see the other presenters as well, as I'm gonna start the, um, the questions. We had a lot of very interesting questions. Some apply to all. Um, well, Jeff, since you're already on, um, actually, you know what, I'll start with a general question that uh, you can all address, uh, and it's one of, one of the final questions that we got. Do you, is, are there any published papers? Do you, uh, do the three of you have any uh, publications that you could share so that people can look a little more in depth in what you can tell us in 15 minutes? Jeff, go ahead. That's an excellent question, and uh, I, I'm certainly uh, science-based, and I want to develop those reference papers, but I don't have specific reference papers on the aqua hive, but I do have case studies or case re reports that we could give or share in respect to that. Great. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, case studies, white papers, um, you know, testimonials, client visits, whatever anybody um, would like from us we can we can provide so happy to provide that Antia I think it's going to be similar quite an answer <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, so as I kind of mentioned in our in our presentation uh, we are just getting in the latest data set from our first deploy and we're going to be putting out a, a paper on that right away and I'd love to share it with anyone who's interested uh, so please just send me an email if you're interested, and I'll, I'll make sure that you get a copy of that as it comes out in the near future here. Uh, Bernie, Bernie, one one comment for me is that uh, IISD is going to be publishing a paper shortly. We just I just reviewed their abstract, so that will be in the public domain shortly. Cool, and then great. if anybody's interested, um, ketos.com, we have a lot of content on that on our website. Well, that's it. You know, in the handout. Any specific questions? If you want to know things in more detail, in the handout you have each of these uh, people's emails, each of our uh, panelists' emails, and, and you can uh, contact them directly. Now, I'm going to go to Greg because there's three people who asked me essentially the same question. Um, what is the technology that's actually in your microwave-sized box? Because oh. you don't give it to any of the science. Oh, um, that's a that's a trade secret. No, we, we use... We use three different methodologies, uh, all EPA approved, uh, spectrometry, uh, we use wet chemistry, and then we use um, proprietary sensors that we've actually developed. So all uh, EPA uh, approved methodologies. 
uh, depending on uh, the parameter that needs to be tested and monitored, um, the robotics automation uh, then routes the water to that specific module within the unit uh, to do the testing and monitoring. Excellent. Um, specifically for, for Anthea, um, so your on-site measurement for TSS, turbidity, flow rate, is, is crucial for, for regulations like uh, MDMER here in Canada and provincial. Um, what do you think of that? What, do you, what are your comments on that? Um, so as an early stage technology, we cannot yet be used as a regulatory reporting. Um, in general, we are putting the sensor in, in process so that we can provide an early warning system in order to let you know when things look like they're trending towards a, a problematic area. So you can make operational uh, changes that will either uh, resolve that problem or take an additional sample and send it to a laboratory in order to get that environment or that regulatory compliance. And then if we're not, uh, Kitos, we actually are working with the EPA. Uh, so we actually have two uh, pilots that are being run, uh, evaluations that are being run uh, with the EPA currently um, for exactly that purpose, uh, so that companies can use us uh, across the various states uh, in the US and then eventually into Canada um, for regulatory compliance. Excellent. And Jeff, would you like to address this too? Because it seems to be something that uh, will apply to all your technologies. Oh, we don't hear you, Jeff. Sorry, I muted myself earlier. Uh, so in our case, uh, we're not trying to re replace the CALA accredited labs or some of the accredited labs at this moment. Uh, we are used to support that work and to reduce the amount of sampling. So an example from another industry was be a brewery in, in BC, which wanted to, uh, to, re to reduce the amount of, of sampling they had to do. So we put in a spectrometer, we're measuring DODs, the TSS, COD at the, uh, on that facility, and then we were able to cut back their, their overall operating cost associated. But we're not trying to replace the lab because for us, uh, we recognize that uh, the sensor technologies that we're putting remotely in the field are, are in very remote conditions, we don't have duplication and those types of things in terms of, of that. Something I'm looking at to build some duplication into some of the capabilities so that we can reduce the amount of, of, uh, of uh, lab samples as well. I, I have another excellent question that it, it was given during Greg's presentation, uh, but I think it applies to the other two as well. Because you have a, a remote part of it and you can actually access and, and see the data, how is the security handled? Do you have encryption? Yes, we do. Uh, so bidirectional encryption um, and uh, the processing as far as the Kedos platform is concerned is actually done uh, within the cloud. Um, so if anybody accessed and managed to somehow get any data from the Shield itself, it would really be meaningless. Um, and then as far as physical security is concerned, uh, we have an extra layer of physical security that we provide to our customers. And we understand, so we are actually deployed in remote areas of the, of the world, um, you know, where there's not a lot of access. Um, so we need to, number one, weatherize. So Jeff mentioned, obviously, um, handling extreme heat uh, or extreme cold. So able to weatherize a unit to withstand um, that environment. Uh, and then physical security as as well. And, and our answer is similar. The data is encrypted on both sides. We are also uh, cloud-based for the data analysis. So same thing, if you intercept the data on the way, it's, it's raw, there, there's nothing of value there, and it is uh, uh, encrypted in both directions. So. An absolutely critical aspect of our operation as well, but is the encryption. Uh, I do have uh, communication engineers that are handling that side of things for me, and I, I'm not the expert. I'm happy to say that, that I, I have experts that work on that area for us. And, and one more addition uh, is we work with DOD, uh, and we've been fully vetted from a security standpoint. Okay, good. Uh, there, there was a question actually during Jeff's presentation 
uh, that you, I, I believe, answered later on. It, it was the question is whether it's based on a service agreement, or you know, and and you mentioned it that it can be either out of capital or out of operating. Um, exactly. So you actually answered the question, but it, again, I, I wonder, uh, Greg and Antia, is is this an option for you as well? So, so um, we. So similar. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Greg. No, no, go ahead, Antia. Oh. Ladies first. Um, yep. So similar, similar to Jeff, we, we offer both models at this point. So we can either do a capital expenditure or as an operational cost, however it suits your budget at this point. Yeah, so we, we provide purely OPEX, um, and there's a reason for that. Is, is number one is uh, we provide a, a warranty on the unit. Uh, we provide uh, upgrades uh, periodically, um, you know, typically once a quarter on both the hardware and the software. Um, if ever we come out with a new version of the unit, uh, then we essentially replace that unit with the new version of the unit, and then obviously upgrades uh, on the um, on the platform as well, and then additional or, or future releases of parameters. So we have a roadmap, as you can imagine, of additional parameters that our our clients request, um, and as and when we release them, our clients automatically get access to those parameters. So Bernie, to answer this more carefully, uh, but the my preference is always to to lease at least to people so that, and to do it in such a way that we maintain uh, an involvement with the client. I I used to call it you know people used to drop instruments off at the mine sites uh, gate and say here you go good luck. I don't do that. We we want to be uh, actively involved with you participating with you in the in and making sure we address your needs and that's where the, the the we have people monitoring that cloud data for you and seeing what's coming in advising you on things that we see as well and and that's we found that to be really important uh, across the board but anyway that it, it's my preference that people uh, work through a, a lease approach uh, rather than uh, the purchase. Great, uh, thanks for that. Um, I, I'm still getting all kinds of questions coming in. The hour is over. Uh, if you guys are willing to stay on, I can keep throwing questions at you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, th there's one here that uh, that I thought was interesting. Again, uh, Jeff, your systems are often remote and you talked about how you power them up, but the question was for 2S system. For Antia, because you have some in remote locations as well, and how do you do your um, in the remote locations if you're out in the field? How do you power it, and how do you send the data back to the control room? Um, so currently, for powering, we have been uh, solely off the grid. We are looking at doing some solar applications as well. There's no reason it couldn't. Uh, we're not a huge uh, power draw, so that should work, but we haven't done it yet. If you guys want to pilot it with us, we're very open to that. Um, and sorry, the second question was the second part of it. No, that was it. Oh, well, okay. I did have. Hold on, I did have. And, and, then, and then, Bernie, I, I, I have to add is we work with satellite, um, and and solar. That so was we so have good. Those. Thank you. <laughs> we we have so those the options available. Data transmission. Yeah. Th thank you, Greg. The other bit was the data transmission. So uh, we also, like Ketos, will work with whichever data transmission uh, sources available. We'll do cell, satellite, or or internet, um, as I'm sure Ketos do as well. And I'm sure Aqua <laughs> Um Again, for 2S system, um, so there, there, again, there's a, there's a few questions from different people that are kind of similar. Uh, one of them, how many continuous metals can you do? Can you do all 31? Um, can Do you ignore things like calcium and magnesium and chloride, or are they included? And also in selenium, um, can you get down to 2 ppb? Because, you know, as you probably know, selenium is a, is a big target. Uh, so that's that's a lot of questions for you. Uh, I can try A lot all at once, yeah. Uh, so currently we're doing five metals per suite. Uh, as we build out the solution, more and more metals are coming online. So I'm expecting by the summer to be at about 10, and then we just continue to add them as we go along. And, and much like the Keto system, as we do an update, we roll out those additional, or we can roll out those additional uh, metals to clients who are interested in them without hardware upgrades. 
Um, we do do calcium and magnesium, absolutely. They're, they're high interest on, on boiler water monitoring, so they're metals that we, that we have in our current suite available. And I wish I was getting selenium down to two parts per billion. We are working on driving that detection limit down, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so, so keep an eye on us. We're, we're trying to get down to that limit, and I think we will in the near future. But um, right now, we're a little above that on selenium. Uh, selenium, we are. So. Good for you guys. Nicely done. <laughs> so you guys have something ready for selenium, Greg? Oh, we've had it out for better part of sort of 14, 16 months. Yep. And, and how's your detection limit and your quality control? Yeah, so um, down to, to PPB and the way that we validate um, really sort of the accuracy is we regularly run independent lab comparisons. Um, so that's typically the way that we engage with our customers up front. Uh, is we get water samples, uh, run it through the shield, run it through an independent lab, do the comparison. We're anywhere from sort of five to ten percent of a Neelex certified lab, plus or minus, um, and then uh, we're running sort of baselines on the unit. So the great thing about what we do in terms of sort of the monitoring capabilities uh, is we're actually monitoring the health and the status of the unit, and that way we can obviously see the performance of the units and then start um, scheduling our maintenance intervals as well. Some of the, um, the maintenance intervals might not quite be sort of every three months. Uh, you know, we might have to reduce it to every sort of two and a half months, um, but that way we sort of know exactly how the unit is actually operating and functioning in the client environment. Interesting. Um I, I want to add to that too. In, in one of our early applications, we're actually being deployed alongside of the keto system um, because we can do a couple of different metals and they do a lot of other parameters that we don't do. So the, the two systems are very complementary to go together um, in, in different applications. Interesting. That's the, that's good to hear. Um, Jeff, one, one of the things that you've shown is that it's, uh, you know, I, I had some questions that seem to be pretty general on whether your systems are good for like you know, clarifier overflows and also some questions about pond operation from what i've seen to be out in the pond system your system jeff is 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 really applied to that because you you know you you, you have some um sons that are just out there in the water flow uh, as opposed to being pumped to uh, a system where you're measuring uh, and one of the questions I got from you Jeff is are the mines water quality challenges that you see in mining uh, are they different from other industries or what is very unique that's a great question they, they there are some nuances and differences I mean uh, we certainly find that um, if you were using a, a UV spectrometer in a mining industry, the, the TSS values and those types of things are quite a bit higher so often in certain instances. You were talking about clarifiers and things like that. The ponds, uh, we find they are similar though. I mean, uh, it depends on the deployment depths and things because people are putting it into and by, uh, into the pond, there might have the fuzzy water down below, and what's that interface where the fuzzy water is versus the, the water they're going to be using for operations. So we we monitor that that uh, water level, and we've designed uh, stilling wells and various types of solutions for ponds uh, for overwinter monitoring at there and various things like that. So it's 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 all doable. That answer your question properly, Brent? Absolutely. Um, I, I've got another question for everybody here. Is anybody doing total and weak acid dissociable wad cyanide? Not yet. <laughs> that's that's on the roadmap, right? <laughs> so. So we, we are actually starting some cyanide work. I, again, I'm not ready to deploy it yet because uh, we're working with a partner developing that capacity, but we are in process developing that um, currently. So so stay tuned. Okay, so it's in the works. There are some sensors on the market that, uh, especially the ones out of uh, uh, Australia that are in the cyanide uh, monitoring capability. 
Uh, we haven't deployed them or tried them yet. So do you guys have any examples of how your systems have uh, improved the the operations and the uh, the the costs? Uh, what what have they really done to uh, improve the water management of this? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we have a we have a ton of those depending on on which sector, which industry you're looking at. Um, so a lot of case studies, white papers. Um, you know, feel free to go to our website. Um, they're all accessible uh, based on the industry that you're interested in. Obviously, in this case will be mining. Um, and then, you know, feel free to give me or send me an email, and, and happy to provide that contact. I, at moments like these, I, I'm jealous of Greg and and how long they've they've been deployed. We are working on on getting out our our initial case study for our first deploy. We're expecting to see a 25 to 30 percent reduction in chemical costs at the water treatment facility we are at. Um, very focused on on metals in this particular application um, and treatment can't be adjusted directly based on the existing parameters. So um, unfortunately, I don't have it ready yet, um, but because we just started that trial in December, but please do uh, do follow us and, and shoot me an email and I'll get that out to everybody as soon as it is generated. Jeff? Well, we do have uh, data on that. Uh, I'm not, it's not on my fingertips right now for, for, for discussion purposes, uh, but I mean, if you're sending out two people to do uh, seepage monitoring on a, on a, on a daily basis, uh, what, what are those people's time worth? Are they $75,000 each? And then uh, what, uh, can we save some of that cost because they don't necessarily have to go out as often? What's it cost to an operation to be down entirely? Uh, in, uh, in the largest copper mine in, in Chile had issues with, uh, with uh, uh, algal blooms impacting their desalinization plants. So we developed a proposal for them where we, they would, uh, uh, and what would that cost them? What's a day of operation in, 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 uh, in of a, a large mine uh, cost when they have to shut down for lack of water. So this is the, the these are things where we can do, help and make improvements. So there we would have put out buoys with uh, monitoring for the, and that early detection there. Excellent. That's a great example. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring this to a close, but there there is a number of people who asked me if it's possible to get a copy of the presentations, yep. and I will just suggest to you that download the um, uh, the handout uh, and you can send an email to each of the panelists and they will share whatever they are comfortable with sharing. Um, so with that, I will thank you all very thank much. You. Uh, thank thanks for having us, Bernard. I think thank it's, you. we all I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to share. <laughs> thank you. And thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you all did a fantastic job and, uh, and very exciting things coming up in the pipeline still. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Thanks so Bye. much. Thanks. And with the closure, we have the, uh, the next ESRS presentation on January 25th for the Rec Remedy Mechanisms Workshop. And this is also in, in one of the handouts. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. Happy 2022.